this is particularly for youtubers and all who use my content and my teachings it's important for you to know that we give unreserved access to use this contents based on the understanding that everyone who uses them desires number one to preach jesus and desires to be an extension of this spiritual value that we're sending to the nations listen to me you have to read the bible as a spiritual man to profit from it even if you are reading about business even if you are reading about marriage even if you are reading about relationships if you read the bible as an intelligent intellectual you will find many gaps if you read the bible entirely as a businessman the bible demands that there must be a state you assume for the profit of it to be derived are we together now the bible was designed to profit men to the degree to which they are spiritually minded as they read the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace now a businessman can open the bible and read it and find valuable business lessons but eventually as you sojourn you will find things that don't make sense and will not add up are we together if you are a marriage counselor and you open the bible looking for ideas you will find valuable ideas that appeal to the intellect but eventually you will find confusing statements if you read the bible just as any other person who is not spiritual it will profit you for a while but one day you will stumble across thoughts statements ideas expressions stories and personalities that will trouble and disturb your understanding so ephesians 1 and verse 17 paul for you that the god of our lord jesus christ watch this and the father of glory may give unto you i hope you know he's speaking to people who are already born again may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened ye may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power now please lend me your attention again every story in the bible contains within it listen every story in the bible in fact it is even safe to say every statement and every expression in the bible contains within it lessons or principles that can cause the believer to walk in victory did you get that every statement every story every expression in the bible contains within it lessons or principles that can help the believer to walk in victory romans chapter 15 and verse 4 the bible says in romans 15 and verse 4 whatsoever things were written it didn't matter what it was even if it is statistics even if it's the statements that satan made even if it's a statement that demons made whatsoever were written aforetime provided they were written in this book the bible says there is profit from them you either have a lesson to learn from them or you have a principle to derive from them are you learning how to profit from scripture otherwise why would you read in the bible statements that satan made how does that profit you why would you read in the bible statements that hedonistic people wrote why would it profit you the Bible would have just edited statements that only Jesus said or only born again people said. Yet, the Bible is not afraid to scatter through its pages. Sometimes disturbing writings, men cursed God in the depravity of their minds and it was recorded in the Bible. So when the Bible says all scripture is inspired, 
it is not the accuracy of the statement that was inspired is the fact that God God insisted that that statement no matter how insulting or no matter how glorifying it is that it should be written that is why he did not leave you to read the scripture alone there is a provision he gave you a lens from which you can read any scripture and derive profit from it the name of that provision is the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is the profit factor in the believers learning scripture that when you engage scripture from the lens of the spirit of revelation any verse will profit you are we together you will find very disturbing scriptures in the bible like a lying spirit departed from god and came to saul and that statement is inconsistent with god's character at least we learn God by looking at the person Jesus. Jesus never lied. He was full of grace and truth. So we have a right to say something was wrong with the people who wrote that statement. Either they are hearing because they were human, they are receiving. Yet all scripture, including that insulting statement, was inspired by God to be written. Are we together? It is not the insult that God said to write. That means the insult itself does not profit. It does not profit by default. You don't insult God and it is profiting. But it was written there because there is a lesson that can be derived from it that will help you to live a profitable life. I always wondered why certain statements were written. If you have read your Bible properly from Genesis to Revelation and you are sincere, you should have been disturbed. You get to Songs of Solomon, you will jump it quickly and go to the next verse. You get to Leviticus, you are almost feeling sleepy. What in the world is this? Why do I need that for? You get to the book of Proverbs, the first three or four chapters just insults you. It's like a man slapping you. And you are wondering, what in the world is this? You get to the book of Revelation, you are scared to death. You want to quit your job. What sort of a compendium? What was God about? Writing all those statements. And this vile and this beast, he sat on a horse. He judged the nations. People were roasted with fire. How does that encourage me? All scripture were inspired. Koinonia, are you learning now? It was not the events that were inspired. It was not the accuracy of the speakings that were inspired. But they were captured together because God would never let you learn them alone. He was going to give you the spirit of revelation and the spirit of revelation is the one who guides you into all truth that means not everything is truth but everything is written not everything is truth but everything is written <laughs> not everything is truth but everything is written so the holy spirit guides you through the stories through both the sense and nonsense and brings you to the point of scripture where you find truth. It is the reason why you can read a book and see a verse that may not have made sense but because the breath of the spirit comes upon that verse, you learn a lesson. For instance, you read the book of Ecclesiastes. If you read it intellectually, you will hate the Bible because you will think it is saying you should not walk, you should not do anything. Here was the frustration of the preacher. He said, here is the conclusion of the matter. Of reading many books, there is no end and much study is a weariness to the flesh. He says, this is the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commandments and said this is the whole duty of man so should I resign from my job as a result of this threat <laughs> so it means I should not press to increase all scripture you read that thing intellectually you will come up with errors and credit it to God and God says I have no hand in it I never ask you to read it intellectually or just historically you read all of those things as a build up while waiting for the spirit of revelation to sieve through the limitations and the personalities of those who wrote it and bring life to you day, the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your That is the reason why you can read a lot of things and even teach it but the result that follows does not come because light has not come are we together what profits you is not the verse what profits you is the light did you hear what i said 
What profits you is not the story. What profits you is not the personality used. What profits you is not the dexterity of the expression. What profits you is the light. Hmm. And the Spirit entered me when He spake unto me. I needed to hear Him, but beyond the words. So the Bible says the Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. I tell you, many believers do not have revelation knowledge. And many believers do not know that the study of scripture and the profiting of scripture is beyond the realm of archaeology, is beyond the realm of history. Because there is a mystery to this book you are seeing. As opened as it is, there are seals in the spirit. It is your responsibility to open the book, but only the spirit of revelation can unlock the seals. Otherwise, you will only read a a, a plethora of disjointed statements that will cause confusion to you, fear, doubts. Sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. Hear what the Bible says. That was the true light that lighted upon every man. There are false lights. They carry a semblance of power. They carry a, but they cannot, they don't have the potency to deliver the life of God. Hmm. Are we together? Spirit. Why did Jesus take the time do you know that most of his activity when he walked upon the earth, even beyond his crusades and conferences, most of his time was spent in his teaching ministry. And yet he told the people that the Holy Spirit was still going to come. In spite of the fact that I taught you profitably, there is still the paraclete. There were many things Jesus taught that they did not understand. My question is, how will Jesus teach you and yet you don't understand? Who else should teach? How does this, there were many things he said that they did not understand. After his resurrection, they recall some statements and say, so this is what he meant. Do you know why? Because they were bankrupt of the spirit of revelation. Jesus himself, not a prophet. He was the one who personally taught them. But they were unfruitful in many areas. To the point that the Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand scripture. But when the Spirit of God came, many things began to make sense to them. Oh, destroy this temple and I'll build it in three days. Hear the foolish interpretation of that scripture when Jesus stood before Herod. This man said he would destroy our temple. He was talking about his body. Are we together? They said you are a king. Are you a king? And Pontius Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to release you? And he said, ah, ah, ah even though I'm silent, now you've said something. You do not have any power. No man can have power except it is given to him. It is within my power to command a legion of angels. Jesus was speaking from a realm. Why was he silent? Are you seeing that those guys were interpreting all the materials? The scribes and the Pharisees, in terms of accuracy of scriptural memory, none of us till date in this generation, I presume, has the kind of intellectual prowess those people had. For you to be a Pharisee, among the many conditions, you needed to understand the entire Torah of heart. And yet, the one who the scripture said would come was before them and they could not see him. Are we learning? The spirit of revelation. Now watch this. Every story in the Bible, every statement in the Bible, every expression in the Bible whether directly connected to salvation or not, whether directly connected to the revelation of Jesus or not, whether directly connected to the revelation of God or not, under the influence of the spirit of revelation, every story in the Bible can bring forth lessons and can bring forth principles that cause the believer to walk in victory. Did you hear what I said? 
the profiting of scripture only comes under the influence of the spirit of revelation please write that down the profiting of scripture only comes is only derived under the influence of the spirit of revelation brain plus bible study may only profit you so far you will not be at a loss but the holistic profiting intended for you will not be achieved it is under the influence of the spirit of god that the profiting of scripture is derived so when the bible says all scripture is profitable it did not lie including all the disturbing statements that are surrounded in the bible they are not controversies per se they are controversies if approached historically they are controversies is if approached intellectually they are controversies if approached just um in terms of uh, maybe history and literature but the moment you come under the spirit of revelation veils are taken away and you will see things the way it was intended to be seen Son of man, what's yes thou? And he said, the root, the shoot of an almond tree. He says, thou has seen correctly. Means you can see wrongly. You don't have to be blind to see wrongly. Once you are not guided, you will see wrongly. Are we together? Yeah. One time Jesus prayed for a man and his eyes opened. But he saw men like trees. And he laid his hands upon his eyes again. And it opened and he saw things clearly. Now, let's talk about the four assignments of the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping the believer derive profit from scripture and to live an excelling Christian life. Let me repeat myself again, that the spirit of revelation as a dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping you derive profit from scripture and living an overall excellent spiritual experience are you ready number one the first assignment of the spirit of revelation and i hope you know by now that the spirit of revelation is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit just like every other expressions of the spirit it is one spirit but is that he he has compartments and dimensions of his operation and one of those dimensions is that he can operate as the spirit of revelation the assignment of the spirit of revelation listen is number one to give you light from scripture write it down the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to breathe upon scripture breathe upon the bible and cause that regardless what you are studying you will find light light meaning lessons light meaning mysteries light meaning principles from it that help you know god help you understand his eternal plan but then also helps you to live an excelling spiritual life light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. The assignment of the Spirit of Revelation is to give you light. So you can come as a historian, it's not wrong. You can come as an intellectual it is not wrong the bible does not demand that you throw away your brain nor your knowledge of archaeology history in fact the knowledge of those areas aforementioned even become a a great support system when the spirit of god breathes upon you are we together when the holy spirit breathes upon you then all those other things now add to its profiting History is not wrong in studying scripture. That's why we learn. We have lexicons, Greek and Hebrew lexicons. We have all kinds of commentaries that we add together as we study scripture. It takes intellect to study those things. They give you contextual backgrounds. Are we together? There is what we call in theology the principles of biblical interpretation. That means how you interpret scripture for your profiting. That is an intellectual guide. 
but it is profitable. That is where you learn things like the law of first mention. You learn the things like the law of single mention. Are we together? The factors that must be in place for any thought to be called doctrine. Not everything in the Bible is doctrine, even though everything is profitable. Comes from the Latin word doctrina, a body of knowledge that transforms a student to be as excellent as his master. Are we together? Are we learning? Church is quiet. This is koinonia. So the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture. You can carry your Bible and read, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him, John 3, 16, should not perish, but have everlasting life. You will stand there brilliant but confused. What did I do that he died for me? Did I ask him to die for me? Did he have to die? How does a creator have to die to save those he created? That is an expression of weakness. Are you seeing the limitations of intellect? He gave his one and only son. Put it there, please. If you read the Bible like that, the first question is, he gave his one and only son. By which wife? By what mother? You see what is happening to your mind? <laughs> Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? How does it change me? I am all right. If you are poor, it may make sense. What if you are rich? What is everlasting life? I'm staying in a palace. I have a private jet. I have this. What is everlasting life? How does that add to me? I have a PhD. I have an excellent life. Things are working well. How, what is everlasting life? Why do I need it? Because I look at my life and I do not see anything wrong with my life that necessitates the need for any life. I have friends with military. I have friends with the law enforcement agents. I have friends with the legal institution. What is everlasting life? That would be your conclusion if the spirit of revelation does not help you. But when he opens your eyes, the first thing you will see is so loved so loved all those controversies fade immediately the spirit of revelation will guide your heart to the punchline of that statement so loved god so loved and every other verse and statement will just disappear and there will only be three words striking your spirit god so loved god so loved you will not know when you will break down over that scripture and begin to weep this is what he did. So loved. So loved. That can birth an evangelical ministry. Because the, when you stand on a crusade ground, the only thing you will hear is God so loved. And you can begin to weep like the patriarchs who wept. And we did not understand the basis of their crying. They were not people who were driven by arguments. I was watching one of the documentaries of late Billy Graham. And he was having... Um, a discussion with he was going for a, a, a you know a crusade somewhere and they were having I think a radio or a session with the journalist and the rest and they asked him a very serious question they said how are we sure that your crusade here is not just to come and manipulate people into subscribing to a faith that they do not agree with and he looked and smiled and made a very profound statement he said my message is a proclamation I am proclaiming something that has been done. My, it's, a, it's a message I was sent to proclaim. I am only a messenger. My assignment is not to explain the dynamics of what happened. I am proclaiming what was done. But that in that message there is the power to heal the total man. I said this is an evangelist indeed. He conquered nations because the spirit of revelation was upon him. So loved and you are standing there and the, the healing anointing can flow through that revelation God so loved that crippled man there God so loved the blind mama at the back of that crusade ground God so loved the stubborn drunkard that came to that crusade ground and rather than being judgmental and being angry because the spirit of God has made scripture to be profitable compassion is the response are we, are, are we seeing now so while on one hand what you are seeing is a controversy. What is eternal life? Another person is seeing God so loved. And from that, this that represents the purposes of God. 
the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you derive light from scripture the light component of scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says the light component from scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says now i understand some of the statements of our fathers where they would say just head knowledge men like ew Kenyon, kenneth hagen of blessed memory they would say faith is not mental ascent are we together no it is not mental ascent absorbing the truth intellectually is profitable but not enough to make you become what it says as many as received him he gave them power when you receive that word power is derived from it that helps you to become power to become power to become power to become power to become a saved person power to become a transformed person number two what is the assignment of the spirit of revelation are you ready the first assignment of the spirit of revelation we said is to give you light from scripture let me add to that and then to connect the believer to God's eternal plan the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture and then to connect the believer to God's eternal plan you need to add that to give you light from scripture but not isolated light light that connects you to God's eternal plan the same second Timothy chapter 3 let's read 14 and 15 the light from scripture should primarily connect you to God's eternal plan it says but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them 15 it says and that from a child watch this thou hast known the holy scripture which are able to make you wise but not just random wisdom wise unto salvation wise unto salvation wise unto salvation the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is helping you to draw light God's eternal plan. Can I give you number two now? The second assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you draw out light or to help you draw out lessons or principles from scripture. To help you draw out lessons or principle from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory the spirit of revelation helps you to draw out lessons principles from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory that means he's not limited to just giving you light that reveals the eternal plan of God. He does not stop there. He's not just interested in your knowing the eternal plan of God. Are we together? He's interested in your holistic victory. That means if the spirit of revelation comes upon my life, either through the ministry of the teaching priest or my personal encounter with him, the first thing in order of spiritual priority is that the light that comes from scripture connects me to understand God understand the state of man or my state in light of redemption to understand Jesus and to understand the gospel and his eternal plan but it does not stop there light will still come by the spirit to give me the uh, a knowledge of the lessons and the principles that I need to learn as touching every other aspect of my life finances are we together relationships how to excel in career those other aspects will not be left out in order of priority the focus of the spirit of revelation in bringing the knowledge of scripture for you is God's eternal plan and his program as captured in Christ but that it also tends to providing holistic victory by bringing light as the lessons and the principles from scripture for your total wholesome victory number three what is the third assignment of the spirit of revelation are you ready listen and then write 
inspiring the mind of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. The third assignment of the spirit of revelation is to inspire the minds of the believer so that you are able to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. Isaiah 11 and verse 2 talks about the seven spirits of God. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says, verse 3, that he shall make you of quick understanding. He will do something to your understanding. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu spoke and said, there is a spirit in man. And he says the inspiration, the same word breath of the almighty, make it men or give it them understanding. The third assignment of the spirit of revelation, in addition to connecting you to understand God's eternal plan, in addition to providing the lessons and the principles from scripture that make for your total wholesome victory in life and destiny. That means you should not be an excellent Christian and fail in other aspects of your life. In order of priority, you must understand God, his plan, yourself, Jesus, the gospel, salvation, but your finances should speak. Your relationships should excel. Your influence should not be in want. Are we together? The spirit of revelation provides the resources, the lessons to learn, the principles to know, to become a totally victorious believer. And then number three, we said, inspiring the minds of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. Please look up believers. Let me talk to you for a moment. If your Christian experience does not translate to a context that makes unbelievers and the territory around you to acknowledge that there is value. Are we together? One, one of my discussions that I'll be having the lecture in is on the role of faith in contemporary Africa. Are we together now? Does faith still hold relevance in civilization or we should throw it away? Do you know why people are asking those questions? Because if there are many churches, many of us men and women of God, but the society cannot, it is not reflected in the society, the value of being a Christian. Are we together now? The society, the government and the principles and the policies that are put together, they may not necessarily be spiritual, but that in the presence of believers and Christians, the God life must translate into productivity and into advancement. I am a firm believer in territorial transformation as proof that you have encountered God. These are they that turn the world upside down. Not from a fanatical standpoint, are we together? Not from an extremist standpoint, but that you import the value system of the kingdom and you use it to provide policies that enhance men. That's right. The kingdom. The spirit of revelation helps you to birth thoughts, to birth ideas that translate into productivity and translates into advancement. Captains of industry should rise from the Christian fold. Are we together? World changers who love Jesus haven't understood thoroughly the plan of salvation and that you've partaken of it by making Jesus Lord of your life. Now you are able to take advantage of the resources of intelligence and creativity by the Spirit to bet solutions that transform people. That whether people are Christians or non-Christians, they can come to you and they can see the excellency of your spirituality speak to the growth of society this is what Jesus left the kind of Christianity we are doing in this nation and in Africa I tell you the truth we will keep flattering ourselves for a long time until the world tells us you are becoming a nuisance because our fanatism is not translating to societal transformation and you cannot speak to people in power until you can import the reality of the God life when it changes policies when he stops crime, are we together? 
when it helps to bring is and stops um you know all kinds of uh, gender inequality for want of word and all of these things if because you are a christian you treat your wife well if because you are a christian you train the people in your school and the students in your school that's christian school they pass all their work they are excellent they are well behaved you see you now have the credence to formulate a policy in honor to your faith that government can use because you have result to show this is how nations are transformed nations are not transformed through blind fanatism the reason is because fanatism is enhanced by small-mindedness. Once your mind is small and you are not global in your horizon, you will believe you are making progress. But there are powers that only understand God as profit to society. Did you hear what I said? You must translate yourself that they can say because a church was planted here, the crime rate in this area just went down. And you can literally use statistics to confirm that from the time this church was planted, on account of the spiritual value that is being communicated from that man of God, that woman of God, that priest, that apostle, that prophet, it has translated to a decline in prostitution. It has translated to a decline in irresponsibility. Men are now taking their place. Families are mended. Are we together? People are getting jobs. All kinds of crime is reducing. Nations and governments will call you and say, we are not interested necessarily in the God you serve, but we want to know what policy runs your organization that produces a kind of profit. Now you have the audacity to say, my policies are derived from my convictions and they will still listen to you because the results are there to show. Your name is to be hallowed. The church is the light of the world. We are not a congregation of dummies bound by blind fanatism with no profitability to society. God is helping our generation to redefine the value of the Christian faith. We are not a news and so civilization. We may pray in tongues. The world may not understand the praying in tongues, but the creativity that comes from that praying in tongues, they will not deny it. Are we together now? Yeah. This is what God is helping us to do, to penetrate systems and structures, to translate spirituality and give it a context of intelligence that provides value, value that is applicable in nation building, value that is applicable in terms of human resources. Christians should not be part of the membership of a church and after five years, they are not productive. They are not helping themselves. They are beggars. Are we together? Waiting for palliatives. What then is the value of the gospel? If you sell me that kind of gospel, I will reject you. In order of priority, it should be connecting to the eternal plan. But the, spiritual, the spirit of revelation empowers us. If everybody in this place is able to feed 10 people, can that bring impact to our society? Do you think that it, it, it garnishes, it brings beauty to your spirituality? Last year I had the honor of speaking at the World Conference of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And one of the things I shared with the people there, thankfully most or all of them are renowned businessmen, billionaires, millionaires, captains of industry, controllers of systems and structures, but that most of them, if not all of them, at least they call upon the name of the Lord. And one of the things that I taught there was the wisdom of Egypt. Even though Moses was called to be a deliverer, part of his qualification was that God sent him to Egypt to learn the wisdom of the Egyptians. Let me submit to you. There are many Christians who cannot be good governors. There are many Christians who cannot be good presidents. There are many Christians who cannot be good ambassadors. Do you know why? Fanatism without translating spirituality with intelligence in a way that brings profit to society. Chances are excellent now that if I become some kind of position as a Christian, you see, if my mind does not receive a superior kingdom orientation, to know that my jurisdiction is the globe, revealing Christ, but doing that in a way that is not just fanatical. 
are we together that you can be able to statistically prove the value of my knowing God you see it is because in this side of Africa we don't have value for statistics we don't have value for reviews are we together now in many parts of the world and if God gives you grace to broaden your horizon one of the things you will learn is that people don't believe nonsense. When you tell people something works, they will tell you, bring your facts and your figures. That even though the context of what you are communicating is spiritual, if God intended for that gospel to reach men, you should show me statistically. If you cannot show me how they are translated spiritually, show me the moral excellence that was derived. That 10 people, because they came to Christ, society has become better. That an armed robber called Barabbas, that he encountered Jesus Christ. And because of that, show me statistically, the Bible has a statistical proof of transformation. One prostitute met Jesus and as a result, a whole city was converted. One madman met Jesus and a whole city was converted. Jesus was not a fanatic. He transformed people. Are we together? He was strong on his convictions as far as representing the Father is concerned. But he penetrated systems and structures. Economic systems felt his impact. Religious systems felt his impact. Family life systems felt his impact. Are we together? Intellectual systems felt his impact. He entered the temple and he sanitized all kinds of misuse of God's house. This is Jesus for you. He spoke among people and they saw the wisdom in the things that he said. All those who fought Jesus were people who were living in denial, not ignorance. His statement was clear and unmistakable. Nicodemus came testifying on behalf of the scribes and the Pharisees and said, we know. We, are, we know that you are a man sent from God. It's only that because you've won the heart of the people, it has disturbed us too much. We have to create a formula to dampen your influence. And he died, but he rose. This time around, we are the fruits of his resurrection, extending his value system. I have taught you that the gospel is not only a message that saves. The gospel is a value system that can translate society. All the societies today that we celebrate at the core of any territorial development is their value systems. And value systems are derived from convictions. It is convictions that translate to value systems that translates to policies that if enacted, they transform people. Moral excellence is first a mindset, a value system that translates to a policy. The spirit of revelation breathes upon your mind. Is someone learning? The church should not be the only one calling us. The Bible says men will say, come let us go to the house of the Lord. Are we together? That somebody who is a non-Christian, because of the excellency of your understanding and your applying scripture, and the corresponding results, undeniable, that flows through your life. Someone who is a non-Christian can come to you like Nicodemus in the night and say, listen, I don't love Jesus, I don't believe in God, but I cannot deny the fact that you're being a Christian, the impact of your salvation experience, the impact and the dexterity of your spiritual understanding, the intelligence that has come from your spirituality is compelling. Can you teach me his ways? It's easy to win poor people on a crusade ground, but you are going to win kings and nations and territories by importing spirituality to a context whose value can be seen and felt in society. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations See Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. 
Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory said this and I quote. He said, leadership is not about maintaining followers. Transformational leaders turn followers to leaders and leaders to agents of transformation. The end product of the journey to your spirituality is not fanatism and extremism. I repeat, the end point at the back of your journey to knowing God, understanding salvation, and utilizing scripture alongside the ministry of the spirit of revelation is not to produce a profitless fanatic. No, an intelligent God will not design such a system. Translating spirituality to a context that can lead to personal and territorial transformation. I refer you to my message, Commanding Salvation Over Territories. You will become a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back to your place of work. Do you know why God does not promote men in the kingdom? Their value will be useless to society. Their fanatism will only become a distraction to many and even lead many through anger away from God, not towards Him. So God would rather them remain at a level. Promotion comes when profit can be derived. Many of you are administrators and you are business people. Talk to me, intelligent people. Do you promote someone who will not bring profit to the organization? Part of the principles that you use to promote people is you check their performance before that time. Am I right on that? Their performance in terms of delivery, in terms of representing the values of the company. When you see that these people can be a greater representation, you promote them. That is how it happens too in the kingdom. When when God can derive profit from your life, he lifts you so that you will help men see him in a way that properly represents him. The higher you rise, the more confusion you can bring to the name of the Lord if you don't know him. Did you hear what I said? The higher you rise, the more misrepresentation and the more confusion you can bring to the Christian faith and to the name of the Lord. That's why there are people, no matter how they pray and fast, they, are, they will not rise beyond certain things. There is a kind of knowledge they need to take away from their minds. And there is a kind of knowledge about what they need to have so that their rising becomes profitable for the kingdom.